Hello students, today we are going to discuss the topic that is incidence of tax. In the earlier class or earlier session, we have discussed the residential status. Means, how an individual will be decided his residential status. Now, in this unit, we will try to understand once it is determined his residential status, whether he is tax payable or not. If it is payable, how? Is it resident or RNOR or NRI? Resident means only resident, RNOR means resident but not ordinary resident and non-resident. So now look at these slides and let us understand today very clearly. Okay. So, first we will try to discuss about introduction. Introduction how? So, whenever a resident is determined his residential status, it has to be known how his total income is calculated. If it is calculated, whether has he earned in India? If it is earned, is it accrued or yet to be received? Or if it is yet, is it taxable or not? So, how do we decide this? This we will decide based on time and place of accrual or receipt. Time means when are you receiving? Are you receiving in the previous year or not? Place of accrual means is it accrued in, in within India or outside India? Or it is a receipt? Is it received? The receipt whatever an individual or his resident has received, is he received in the previous year or any other year? Based on this, incidence of tax will take place. Incidence of tax means whether it is taxable or not. Okay. So, residential status of an SSC it will determine whether his income is taxable or not. And apart from this, it is also known that whatever income he has earned based on receipt or accrual or relationship. So, as we have a section 5 which says that there are certain incomes which should be included and excluded. So, what are those incomes that should be included and what are those incomes that are should be excluded? Let us understand. So, first we will see if a resident, the person resident whenever we call, he whether the income whatever we are charging him to be paid to the income tax department, is it received or deemed it to be received in the previous year that too in India or not that has to be very clear. So, if you look at here this determines that the place and time these two are very very important to pay the tax. If you are earning somewhere in India abroad and if you claim that I will pay tax, no it is not like that. That is the reason whenever incidence of tax takes place, it is very clear that accrued time, place and receipt. These are the three different terms which has to be understand. You can look at here, accrues or arises or is deemed to accrue. Accrued means you know it to be received accrued means it to be received or it to be or it is assumed to be accrued or arise to him in India during the previous year irrespective of the date and place of receipt. So, where, where, what is the date? What is the place of receipt? That is irrespective of all those things we will only look after that whether the income is receivable or not or accrues or arises to him outside India during the previous year whether it is brought or not to India during the year means here you have to remember the two points whether the income is yet to be received or not if it is received yet to be received whether it is in India or not and sometime if it is outside India that is yet to be received are you going to bring that in the previous year if yes, the what is that? Okay. Next, not ordinarily resident. 
then how do we determine if he is a not ordinary resident whether the tax is payable or not okay when do we call not ordinary resident person as we discussed in our earlier session that what we have discussed when do we call when they satisfy one basic condition or two basic condition and only one additional condition so that person okay that is that person is called not ordinary person so when is incidence of tax arises incidence of tax arises when received or deemed to be received in india in the previous year so when it will be done to this person received means already received or deemed to be received means he will receive maybe in later period he may receive that okay but in when it is in the previous year itself that also based on the time and place next you can just look at you accrues or arises or is deemed to accrue or arise to him in india during the previous year irrespective of the date and place of receipt this is for whom this is for resident but not ordinary resident to that person it is the rule what is the rule whether the income has arised means it has not it raised at all okay but it is deemed to be accrued during the previous year in that when in the previous year in that case we will not look after what whether it is in what is the date what is the place that will be not taken into consideration now look at the next one accrues or arises to him outside india during the previous year what it is it is outside the india and when it is it is in the previous year itself and is derived from a business controlled or managed or professional setup in india see you have earned that income or yet to be earned or yet to be received from where outside the india but when you have done that in the previous year and when can you take when their business or professional are set up or done in within india in that case it would be indian income and it would be taxable income look at the next one non resident so first we have seen residents how they have to pay the tax when they are taxable and even we saw when they are resident but not ordinary resident when they are taxable when they are not taxable now look at the non resident we know first how do we decide them but later how whether it is taxable or not let us understand so the persons who do not satisfy any basic condition or additional condition we call them as non resident and how their income will be incidence to tax their income will be incidence to tax when received or deemed to be received received or deemed to be received in the previous year the place and date of accrual is not important what do we call received or deemed to be received they have received the income or yet to be received or they will receive when in the previous year in that case we will not consider whether the place and date are important they are not at all important okay next one accrues or arises or is deemed to accrue or arise to him in india during the previous year irrespective of the date and place of receipt so which is yet to be received which may arise when in the previous year in that case also where the two in india itself in that case we won't consider the time date and place in that case that income will be considered as taxable income for the non residents also so these are the three different persons where their incomes are taxable based on how they are earned how they are received and how they are accrued look at the next one you can just have a glance over this these are the different kinds of incomes and different types of status first we'll discuss one by one income received in india whom we are discussing first one resident and ordinary resident 
and resident and not ordinary resident, non resident. These are the three different types of status. So, the first one income received in India. So, whether whoever it is, whatever income we receive in India, all the three person incomes are taxable. All the three person incomes are taxable. Now, income deemed to be received in India, first one is they are received, so it is taxable for all the persons. Deemed to be received means they will receive in later due course. Yes, in that case also it is taxable for all the persons. Next, income which accrue or arises in India means accrued or arise yet to be received or yet to be raised. In that case also income whatever you earn through that course it is taxable for all the three persons. Who are those three persons? resident and ordinary resident, resident and not ordinary resident and non-resident. Three, these three persons are also taxable. Now, look at the fourth point. What it is telling? Income which is a deemed to accrue or arise in India. There is a slight difference if you just look at your third one and fourth one. Okay, Income which is deemed to accrue means it is not a tricky. It will be deemed to be accrued or arised in India. In that case also it is taxable. So, you might have observed one point in these three four, four situations. See whether we received, yet to receive, deemed to receive or deemed to accrued. In these four cases the whatever income is earned by these three different persons it is taxable. Is it clear? Yes. Now, look at the fifth point. Income which accrues or arises outside India. Under this, we have two situations. What is that? Income which accrue or arises outside India means the four first four situations we are discussing that if they are received or yet to be received or yet to be accrued or yet to be arised, that all were in India itself. In that case, that were taxable for all these three different persons. But if you look at the fifth point, here we are telling that it is arised outside India. So, if it out, arised outside India, how it is taxable and to whom it is taxable, let us see under that first situation A. Incomes which accrues or arises outside India from business control in India or a profession set up in India means actually it has been accrued and arised outside India. But where the business is controlled, business is set up and controlled in within India. In that case, except NRIs who are non-resident of India. Why? Because they earned outside India. Only their control is done. Yes, only to them it is not taxable. And to other persons it is fully taxable. Whatever income they get it, that is taxable. Now, look at the last one. That is incomes accruing or rising outside India means it's totally outside foreign income we call. It is taxable to the only one person who is that who fulfills in earlier session we discussed yes that is basic condition and additional condition. So, who is he called resident and ordinary resident that person it is taxable and two other persons it is not taxable. So, it is very very important to understand how the incidence of tax takes place. Okay. Now, types of incomes, we have two types of incomes, one is Indian income, the other one is foreign income. So, what is Indian income? Do we have any other specific incomes? No, it is not like that. We have certain criteria based on which we decide, okay, whatever income we earn through these channels, we call it as Indian income and anything we earn from abroad, we call it as foreign income. So, let us understand about first Indian income. Under Indian income, we have incomes received, income deemed to be received, income accruing or arising or income deemed to accrue or arise in India. So, these are the four different ways where an Indian will earn the income. So, first one is incomes received. It is very pretty clear. The point itself is telling what it is telling. Whatever income you receive in within India or you earn that is called incomes received. So, let us see one by one what actually they mean to us. Okay, Incomes received. Income received in India during the previous year is taxable in the hands of all SSEs irrespective of their residential status. 
it is the only first receipt that is important subsequent receipts have no significance means it's very pretty clear whatever income you receive or you earn within india that is called indian income and it is taxable to all the assessees assessees means we all know the taxpayers are called assessees so whoever earns irrespective of their residential status whether out of the three persons if they earn within india that is called as incomes received and it is taxable for all the people let us have one example for example uh, mr a who is having some capital assets in mauritius yes but whatever income he is getting from that if he is receiving in india where he is having that capital assets in mauritius but where he has earned that income that broker or the person whoever paid that income to him he is in within india it means where he is earning he is earning within india in that case it comes under indian income next one incomes deemed to be received deemed means i said na you are yet to be received which means you will receive in due course or for the period okay these incomes are not actually received but the law treats them as income received for income tax purpose normally the employees the government employees they will get uh, annually some increments or year years will be increased but they will be paid it later it may but they have to pay the tax for that assessment or that previous year why because it is treated as they will receive in due course for the income tax purpose so these are treated on par with income received in other words whether income is received in india or deemed to be received in india it is taxable here in all the hands of assessees whether he is resident not ordinary resident or non residents obvious thing you have you all might have studied in accounts outstanding salaries outstanding wages means the expenses which are yet to be paid even we have studied accrued commission means commission which is yet to be received but it is assumed that in that period we will receive for the tax purpose it is assumed as same it is we have received similarly incomes deemed to be received means whether actually they are not received but according to law for tax purpose it is assumed as it is received and it is taxable for each person whoever earns the income next one under that we have some points first one is annual accretion under that the first one is provident fund what is annual accretion means uh, the employees will keep certain amount every month aside even employer also saves the same percentage of amount towards the employee and this amount will be accumulated together at the end when the employee retires at the time the total amount will be paid that is called annual accretion this is deemed to be received normally we have certain limit when you go for salary chapter there uh, for recognized provident fund only 12% has to be saved and interest would be 9.5% and excess of all that will be taxable and that income is also treated as income deemed to be received next one transferred balance then what is transferred balance means standing to the credit of employees account or unrecognized provident fund means converting unrecognized provident fund into provident recognized provident fund whatever the balance you transfer the excess of that will be treated as income deemed to be received next dividend normally dividend is come normally we treat it as income from other sources yes and it is exempt if you are receiving from indian companies it is tax exempt so deemed to be the income of previous year in which it is declared distributed or paid as the case may be see normally dividend will be declared in some period and it will be paid later it will take a longer period why because as soon as the dividend is declared the company cannot pay to the shareholders why because they have certain procedures rules they have to take the permission from the shareholders directors they have to conduct the annual general meeting interim meetings meetings has to be conducted it has to be approved so it takes a longer process but whenever it is de declared in that year itself it is taxable whether they receive in the after one year or two years that is the later part but it is taxable okay next one interim dividend 
interim dividend shall be deemed to be the income of the previous year whichever year it has been declared and whoever is eligible for receiving that they are they have to pay the tax because they, that is also will not be received because interim means half yearly yes and for first of all whenever dividend is declared it will take some time and interim means six months again it will take a longer process or a longer procedure that will be little delayed but yet it will be deemed to be received and it is taxable for that previous year. Next incomes accruing or arising. Income is assessed to tax not only received but also on accrual basis means uh, which means natural growth or increment which will be raised or done later period but is it to be considered as an income to the income tax purpose. Accrual of income means a stage where the assessee acquires a right to receive income means they have right to receive but they have not yet received it okay but still it is treated as an Indian income only. On other hand arise means coming into existence or notice presenting itself. Next the right of a partner to receive the share of the profit these are few illustrations which I want to explain that how accruing or arising will also be considered as an income ok. So, the right of a partner to receive the share of the profit of the firm of an accounting year. So, whatever year it is, it is a right of every partner to receive the profit, yes, but they will receive it whether the company earns or not that is the later part, but they are having the right to receive that is called accrual or arising part or arising the income. Profit on sale of movable property, commission on insurance business, underwriting commission, and excretia payment this all comes under the accrual or arising of income which is deemed to be considered as Indian income itself. Next we have income deemed to accrue or arise within India. Let us see what actually it is. Some income shall be deemed to be accrue or arise in India even if such incomes in reality have not yet accrued or arised in India. See this is how the great income tax department it is. Some income shall be deemed to be accrue or arise in India even such incomes whatever incomes we are assuming they have not it accrued or arise within India but still they are considered as Indian income. Let us see what it may be. Income from business connection in India, salaries, salaries payable outside India for example we have uh, Indian foreign services, the ambassadors who work for our country yes they are the employees of our nation we are paying outside India but the person who is receiving it is an Indian income itself. Why? Because he is working for India, he is a resident of India but he is working as an uh, Indian employee, IFS, Indian foreign services, they all are the employees of an Indian but the salary is paid outside India, yes. So, this is also it means that is the meaning whether we have not earned within India but still it is considered as an Indian income dividends, income from interest, income from royalty, fees for technical services this all comes under income deemed to accrue or arise in India. Next any income accruing and received outside India from a business controlled from or professional setup in India the point what we discussed that is any income whatever we receive accruing and received outside India but their business is controlled and their professional setup is within India in that case also it is considered as an Indian income. You can see here it is taxable for resident and not ordinary resident also but it is not taxable for non-resident only resident and not only two persons are taxable the other third person is not taxable that is NRIs are not taxable for this and applicable for income chargeable to tax profits business and gain from business or profession. Why? Because we may have different branches in some other countries but the control is from within our India in that case also whatever income you earn that is Indian income itself. Next what is foreign income it was pretty clear which is not yet earned in India and which does not belong to India that is foreign income any income that is arising or accruing or received outside India we are not receiving in, in India that is called foreign income and it is only taxable for 
residence it is not taxable for any other persons and past untaxed income if it is brought to india it is also completely exempted for example there is a person earlier he has not paid tax and was untaxed income was there and is bringing that income to back to india in that case it is completely exempted it means he is do not he no need to pay any tax to the government next so let us see one question related to how incidence of tax is taxable to the different persons look at the question samsung a south korean company a non resident under the income tax act 1961 because south korean company means it's a non resident had the following receipts of royalty in financial year 2021 Indicate giving reasons whether they will be taxable in India or not. Look at here. Rupees fifty thousand from the government of India under an agreement approved by the government of South Korea and India. So now tell me whether it is taxable or not. Just look at here. As per the provisions of Section five of the Income Tax Act, nineteen sixty one, a non-resident is taxable in India on following basis. What is the what are those two bases? Let us see. The first one is. income are accruing or arising in india or deemed to accrue or arise in india or income received or deemed to be received in india in that case they are taxable within india so based on this points let us do the a bit what actually we have to do any payment of royalty to a non resident by the government is deemed to accrue in india why because where he has earned he earned in india itself it means it is taxable Yes. Now look at the next one. Rupees one lakh from Calcutta Company Limited, a resident. It's an Indian company. Why? Because Calcutta Company Limited is an Indian company for import of technical know-how for use in a business in India. So look at here. Payment of royalty to a non-resident by a resident of for use of technical know-how in India is taxable in India. Why? Because where is using? It's an Indian company and is using in India itself. so hence that whatever 1 lakh he has earned that is fully taxable now look at the next bit rupees 75000 from bombay company it is also very pretty clear it's an indian company and resident indian organization for import of drawings for use use in its business in singapore and malaysia though it is an indian company what we are doing we are importing from where we are importing for for what purpose for the business in singapore and malaysia so how to treat this okay just look at here 75000 cannot be taxed in india why because since the payment was the use of asset outside india for what purpose you can just look at the question import of drawings for use in its business where is in its business business in singapore and malaysia though it's indian company but is not using in indian company he is using in abroad outside the india in that case it is not taxable and it is not an indian income look at the debit 50000 from keshoram a non resident under income tax law for use of formula for a business in india so let us see what actually is it taxable keshoram is an indian a indian company yes why because the formula whatever he did it is from india itself so that is also fully taxable look at the last point 40000 from x an indian non resident for use of drawings technical know how for a business in uk so again is a non resident and using for uk so the payment of 40000 made by x an indian non resident to the resident com- non resident company he is a non resident and paying to whom it is also non resident company both are outside india so it is not taxable the business is outside india so it is not at all taxable so let us have one more question just please uh, following are the incomes of mr x we are having different points let us see that one we have three different persons how it is taxed the first one is profits from a business profits from a business means the business should be indian one if you just look at the question a bit profits from a business in london where the business is london london means non resident it is fully not taxable nil and for the resident but not ordinary resident also nil but for resident it is taxable why because a resident of india whether he earned outside india or within india it is taxable look at the b bit 
interest received from a non resident on the loan approved to him for a business carried on in india where the business is but it is in london yes so for resident it is taxable it he is also why because he has to get loan from non resident so for non resident also for three people it is taxable same royalty received where did he received in usa so it is for resident it is taxable for others it is not taxable income from pakistan control from india it is taxable for both for non resident it is not taxable only the thing is you have to remember all the provisions income from sale of land and suitable in india so it is taxable because he sold in india itself so it is taxable for all the three people so my dear students so you have to just remember the rules and how to taxable it is for the three different people yes so thank you all Thank <music> you.